When you talk about the Southeast, which I want the media to be at the front run and dismantling the stereotypes around there, we were not prepared going into the primaries. It was open for everybody to participate. Go back and look to the candidates that contested. How many votes did they get? How many of the delegates were coming from the Southeast? Who did they vote? It tells you that even P. Toby were among the people that sabotaged the interest of the Southeast. Because P. Toby, from the onset, never told anyone that, was he, that he was interested in contesting for the presidency. He never said it anywhere. He never made it anywhere. The Igbos, it is understandable that in Nigeria today, it is only the Igbos that have the, you know, the template that called Omunna. That is applicable in all situations. Where we we'll go inside an Imo Obi to discuss the agenda of Ndibo, the development, and everything that has to do with Ndibo. And we come out with a un unanimous uh, 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 presentation. Mm. There was never anywhere that Obi made it very clear that he is interested to run for the president. And he even, at least, pleaded to be accepted as a, a consensus candidate. Whatever, he has made it very clear everywhere he has gone to. That his ambition is not about Ndibo. It's not about the South. It's about his personal interest. Well, well. He made it very clear that he did not even inform his party, his family members, and even his boss. And none of no elders in the party. And this is the reason why across everywhere he goes, there is no Southeastern, any elder or leader of the from the Southeast extraction that is with him. I will give you another reference. Where in this last in December 15, 2022. Our presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, held his campaign rally in Anambra State. The picture of the rally is out there. The videos, the clip, and everything is there. You can imagine, Equipment Square in Anambra State is about 50,000 capacity. In Anambra, to that in March, they flew to the length and brim of the stadium to receive Atiku Abubakar. The last few weeks ago, the same pit we had is a presidential campaign rally in a kind of an autonomous field somewhere in Onicha. He couldn't even get up to one quarter of that Capacity. This is to tell you where Ndanambra are tilting to. Uh, but whoever that follow that have followed the Igbos of Nigeria very well will know that there is nothing there is nothing called Igbo without the Omonna template. The Omonna has been uh, responsible for all the progress, all the development, and everything that is applicable to Ndibo in Nigeria today. Uh, by extension, the southeast. That is within so, Ndibo. Within Ndibo. Is it, is it roughly comparable to uh, the Omoluabi concept uh, of the... Does even understand Yoruba? Well, yeah. but, uh, you know, the Omonna, it's, it's a moral code. It's a moral you, code you, that brings you, us you together. Do the, you do the right that thing. That brings us together. We are people of honor and dignity. Exactly. It brings us together to know what is our agenda. What are we going for? And this is where I said that P2B never called Ndibo anything. He didn't regard us. But because if he had regarded he, us. He is an Igbo. He is of Ndibo himself. There are a lot of people that are called a claim to be whatever, but we also know the, the traits, the trait of Ndibo is by your antecedents, by your record, by your behavior, your attitude towards that which you claim. His, his, his attitude and the the last uh, uh, movement he did was it was anti Igbo. You don't have, you don't move on your own and expect us to move. Now I keep saying it that Igbos are the people with dignity and honor. We don't go where the crowd is. We are certain and intentional where we're going. I am not trying to relegate him to the bottom corner like whatever a lot of people have been saying. He's from Anambra. He's a former governor, but we don't see him as a force in Anambra State. In fact, it was the PDP that made him. I also want to remind the viewers out there and to you, Uncle. <clears throat> Yuri, to acknowledge that why, when he left as governor of Anambra <laughs> State, his political career ended. He was lying low. He was nowhere to be found. Nobody knows about him. He was in the political wilderness. He was in political wilderness. He was, he, he was, he, 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 you can even say that Peter B was in hibernation after he, he left office as governor. It was Atiku that resuscitated his political vibrancy. It was Atiku that restored his political sagacity. It was Atiku that restored his political image that today he's dwelling upon. It was when Atiku picked him as vice president, can, vice presidential candidate in 2019 against the wishes of party leaders and elders in, in across Southeast and Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Atiku insisted with him that he must go with him. It was Atiku who harnessed his full potential. Even him, Peter B, does not even know his full potential. Well. Because looking at his record in, as a governor of Anambra State, he, 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 he performed below 
the well, benchmark. Well, well, you would say that because you are in opposition. I'm, not, I'm not saying in it, opposition I to that, him. No. I believe that I am not here to discuss people. I'm here exactly, to discuss issues. Exactly, to discuss the issues. Issues. You know. Now, when we talk about issues, about facts and figures, the facts and figures of while he was governor is out there in the public for everyone to peruse. The facts and figures of all his successors and that of his predecessor, the only person P2B is competing with today is Chimaro Kemba Nuju. And none of Obi are not all Soludo, but that's not the issue. But okay. the only reason I'm highlighting this point is to remind people that it was a tickle that made P2B whatever he's enjoying today. The phenomenon that he has become among the young people today, who he has been lying to, you know, I keep defining this P2B issue. You, you, I'm not here to discuss this. You, you say he has been lying to them, yes. whereas there is nothing about P2B that was in secret. I'm it's not here to discuss public, anybody. But you said you're not here to, to, you discuss, you're anybody. Not here to discuss anybody. Who, well, but then you put the anybody there is, in. There is need. To highlight, you know, to okay. you know, elaborate some certain things. Can, can, can I, the can, issue of P2B is more like a young boy who found a little naive girl somewhere and wanted to kind of, you know, come close to the young girl. You know, those days when the, we were young. You see, it, those days when we were is, young, there is no P2B person here. There is no. <laughs> days, uh, so it's not let's, fair. It's so not fair to let's go leave it this way. What we're I'm trying looking to say, at the battle in Anambra. The battle in Anambra. What I'm trying to say is that it would be unfair of P2B not to have at least acknowledged the importance of Atiku Abubakar in his political life. Okay.